root of many people's problems are, especially in healing and deliverance, is they have some issue with a male figure in their life. Okay? Now, some of you may have a good father and everything, but there were some issues. You know, our dads, you know, I, I just put my dad to rest in eternity just about a week ago. Uh, I had issues with my dad. And I noticed one thing, that as long as I had an issue with a fatherly person in my life, my life couldn't progress. And I would suffer through a lot of hurt and a lot of rejection. So I'm here to tell you that, you know, when relationships go bad with your parents, don't blame them. They're trying their best. That's why once we get past that and you can find a spiritual father in your life or even a stepfather or a Hanai father or some male figure in your life that you can respect, I can tell you your whole life starts to turn for the better. And the same thing happened for Jesus in the Bible, you know. Jesus could not start his ministry until he came to the Jordan to be baptized by John the Baptist. And then God spoke and said, this is my son. Only then and then only could he progress into his miracle ministry. There was a little bit here and there. You don't hear too much about it. But as soon as God called him my son, and Jesus had to receive that, he received it through baptism. That's why baptism is important. But, I mean, you know that some of us never got baptized. Well, maybe Catholic style, yeah, when you never had chance or choice. But, nonetheless, as soon as you find that person in your life, and I'm not saying that it has to be a male. If you have a pastor who's a female, I'm all for that too, because I'm non-discriminatory, right? But that person got to be somebody who believes in you no matter what you do. Because sin is a concept that holds a lot of people back. A lot of people are sick, ill, injured, or diseased because they believe they did something wrong in their life. And they have a lot of people that will say that you are like that because you did something wrong in your life. So you need that paternal spirit in your life to be that person that loves you and protects you no matter what. And once you have that, you can kind of move on. So if you look at your notes tonight, it says here, when we consider the concept of fatherhood, we must remember that God absolutely has a place in every man's life. And even if you're a woman, right, there's no gender in heaven. There's no male, no female. Only on earth, there was male and female. All right? Not only is God relevant, but it is impossible to achieve manhood without him. So all of us in here, manhood, when we talk about manhood, we're talking about spiritual manhood. When you go from being immature to mature. Everybody say mature. Mature is not an age. It's not even intellect. Maturity has everything to do with attitude. Because the Bible says when you were a child, you acted like a child. You behaved like a child. You did childish things. But all of us in here, just because you're older doesn't mean you're mature. So I know some older people, they're still immature. Because they still throw tantrums. And they ask me to pray. And they go, but you don't understand. Hold on. I've seen it all. Hallelujah. But... My job as a pastor is to try and get you from immaturity to maturity. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, I gave you a spiritual clue just a couple seconds ago, that if you really want to turn the corner on miracles in your life, now I'm not here to be your miracle worker. I'm here to be your miracle associate. That means that everything I do, you can do, as long as we believe in each other. So the anointing you receive from this ministry is the very anointing that you can operate in as long as you're part of this ministry. I had a call a couple days ago. Somebody left the church a couple years ago. And they said, you know, when I was at your church, a lot of people could get healed from what I would pray. And now all of a sudden, it seems like nothing's there. Anytime you like come home, you can come home. Right? You can prodigal yourself. Right? You can come home. He didn't leave on bad terms. He just left and felt like God was calling him to something. And you have my blessing, but he said, no, you know, when I tried to give him my blessing, he told me this. Pastor Tim, it's okay, I get him. So he severed that fatherly. So what happens now? You're on your own. And I, I got no problem. If you feel like you can, you can, right? If no can, run us. Okay, yay. You guys all know the sign. 
How ironic we hear, right? Still can. They open. 24 hours they open. If you never had meatloaf from front, no go now. You wait till after. Yeah? And so I can feed eight people with that plate. Okay? For real, with mashed potato. Now you get me off track, you see. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so God is relevant. Let me just tell you how much God believes in Father, Son. And if you're a woman, please don't take offense with your women's lib thing. There's no gender in your spirit, so you're still a son. That Father, Son thing, God has linked that up from the beginning of time all the way to now. All right? And He still believes in that because this was, He had to do it for Jesus. Are you better than Jesus? Somebody would say, well, uh, you shut your mouth. You power already. All right, so we all are aspiring to be like Jesus, right? Now, as a good young Catholic boy, I thought I knew everything about Jesus and that Jesus was going to hit me on the head with a golden hammer. He was going to borrow from Thor. It's... Come on now. All you cataholics and former cataholics, you know. I, I know because my dad used to work for the St. Joe Catholic Church. He was in there every single day, and I used to have to come down there after school because he wanted me to talk to the priest. My dad wanted me to be a priest. Guess why? Automatic ticket to heaven. Or so they thought. <laughs> but when I said, nah, girls look good, dad, he's like, what are you talking about? Wow. God is good, amen. See, so he used me a different way, amen. And here I am wearing shorts. In fact, it's hot. I don't take my shoes off. Anyway, feel free. Take your shoes off, all right? Okay. Hey, you guys are supposed to wait till I tell you to take your shoes All right, anyway, all right. Read in your notes here, okay? Manhood is one thing, okay? In determining a father's correct role, we cannot substitute worldly philosophies or humanism in place of Jesus, all right? Just as God is our Heavenly Father, every man who wants to be an effective father to his children must use the Bible as his true, unchanging set of blueprints. Well, you know that God has a plan that he doesn't deviate from. I like when people tell me this. Well, wow, Pastor Tim, you know, I, I felt like God was taking me this way, but I think God changed his mind. I don't think God is in heaven waffling and uh, saying, oh, I mean, you know, know that God is dealing with your decisions every day. Because you have free agency and free will. God is not here to punish you. Why would he send Jesus to forgive you of all your sins and then punish you after for sins? If we say Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, then what are we being punished for? You notice how he got quiet? Like, um... Exactly. If Jesus took away the sin, where did the sin go? Away where? I'm here to challenge a lot of your intellect. Or, I'm here to challenge a lot of what older, mature, quote, unquote, preachers in the past have told us about sin. That again, Jesus was waiting with the golden heaven to smash our head right in as soon as we did it. And then you would have to go and ask forgiveness, and you have to go to kneel down and ask a man to bless you. Father, forgive me for I have sinned. My last confession was, and then you fill in the blank. Probably something like three, four, eight, nine years. <laughs> Hallelujah. If that was the... <laughs> How many of you sinned just a little while ago? Yeah, okay. Good news. Sin was taken away by Jesus. So what did you just do? Stupid thinking. That's all. Yeah. Everybody in here does that. We all do that. Some of you on the way here got mad at somebody driving in front of you. Yeah. I'm good too. Oh, man. You know what? That person in front of you admired your patience. <laughs> They're looking in the rear view and said, What a wonderful driver. They're so patient. Huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Some like, get the hell off the road. What? <laughs> While you're impatient, they're thinking you are patient. And now all that's happening is you're becoming a mental patient. Relax. Yeah? Hallelujah. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. You know what is good about life? As long as you're breathing, you get potential. Wow. Was that a mystery to you? <laughs> 
How many of you still get potential? All right. No, check your pulse. Check your breath. <sighs> okay, I get potential. We all get potential, yeah? And the good part is that God is not done with you. As long as you say, Lord, I'm available and able. You see, the problem with availability is everybody's available. But ability, we always use some kind of reason to stop our ability. Hallelujah. How many of you are available for God to use you on the phone? How many of you are on your smartphone today doing stupid things? Anyway, <laughs> you cannot call them a smartphone if you're doing dumb things on it, okay? If you have a smartphone, you can reach somebody anytime you want. Okay? How many of you know that your quotes or your posts on Facebook, as long as it makes sense, how many of you know somebody's reading it? You are reaching somebody. So well, what are you reaching them with? Somebody twerking. Anyway, you know, some fat lady with should, has no business wearing a bikini twerking. Yeah. People send me this stuff. I'm like scratching my head like, they know what I do for a living or what? <laughs> they want to see my response is what it is. So, hallelujah. Yeah. All right. Go to Genesis 1.26. And if you don't understand, I'm going to point out some concepts to you in the Bible. that maybe it will make sense to you. Um, you know, we all have read Genesis, everybody, including the Jews, right? The Jewish people, the Christians, the Catholics, even the Mormons. They all know this verse, but let me point out a concept to you. And for you old timers, just bear with me. You, you understand. Read verse 26. Then God said, okay, stop already. Let us. Who is the us he talking about? Uh, how do you know that God is part of a Trinity package? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So he's conversing with them. Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Now that, that's a very important word for you. Dominion. Why? Because you are called to dominate everything. Spirit, soul, and body. You're not supposed to fall victim or fall prey to anything out here that is natural. The devil himself is not supernatural. He operates in the natural realm. How do we know? Because he likes to act up with you through other people. How many of you know other people who are acting up with you? Yeah, okay. I bet, I would, if I was a gambling man, and sometimes I am, depends on the state I'm in. Uh, I would bet that every single one of your problems has somebody attached to it. Even your sickness, illness, and disease, because there is no sickness, illness, or disease that can happen unless there's a bitterness pill that you took. If it's not bitterness, it's rejection. If it's not rejection, it's jealousy. Okay? The evil trinity of hell is those three things. All right? So bitterness, rejection, and jealousy all run hand in hand, and then that manifests into something later. I... You, you don't have to believe me, but go through your life cycle. Go back in time and see how many people hurt you. I guarantee you, one of them, there's one culprit there. There's one that hurt you. And you know what I find is not the biggest one, not the most obvious one. It's the one that hits you that you never thought would affect you negatively. It's the one that is the bitter pill that began a root system inside of you. If I say bitter pill, what I'm talking about is an evil seed was planted that began to fester and grow. All right? Because what I see in a lot of people, and you can file this away if you're taking notes, great. You can, I think you get no, no room on your paper. Almost every sickness, illness, and disease ends up in the legs somehow. Why is that? Well, a root has to find the bottom. It has to go to the lowest point. If you study the book of Job, Job was afflicted with boils from the bottom of his feet to the crown of his head. But God always heals from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Why is it opposite? Because your mind controls and dictates everything that goes on with God. Some people say, well, what about the spirit? The spirit is automatic. It's on God's team already. It's your brain. Your brain, based on your affiliations and associations with people, is what affects your whole body. Say it louder. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, something in language your mouth open. I saw moths going in and out. All right. Be happy. <laughs> I'm giving you good news because there is always a happy ending with God. You know what the happy ending is? Change your mindset. You change everything in your life. Anybody that does drugs, what are they doing? Mind altering. What they're trying to do is alter their mind because they're having problems coping with people. Hmm. Somebody who drinks a lot, what are they trying to do? Alter their mindset because they're dealing with people. See, I'm not supposed to say anything that baffles you. You're supposed to agree. And, uh, okay. If you eat too much chocolate cake, you're dealing with PMS. P- oh. People MS. Anyway. <laughs> you guys can preach back. You see these guys. Yeah. You can make all the commentary you like, make everybody laugh. Okay? I can tell you right now, anything to do with anything always has people associated with it. Right? Why do you make the radio loud in your car? Because you can drown out people. You can deal with people. Amen? Hallelujah. People. That's your problem. People that affect your mind. And because you've got to medicate your mind. How I many you know that medicine doesn't, doesn't just come in a pill bottle? It comes in all shapes, sizes. Some people medicate themselves with TV. Some go drugging, drinking. They go driving people crazy. Anyway, there's all kind of ways you can do this. But take a look here. Do, you see this right here? Dominion domination over what? Fish, birds, cattle. There's an important one right there. All the earth. I want you to focus on down right there. Over... All the earth. What are you created from? How many you know that healing is up to you? Whether you want to believe that or not. Uh, yeah, I carry a gift of healing, but it has to meet up with your mindset, which alters your earth. When Jesus wanted to heal a blind person, what did he do? He took some dirt, and then he... <laughs> I know, that's gross. And he mixed it up, and he made a new concoction. He created new eyeballs, and the guy could see. Amen? You see, when the woman was brought to him with the issue of sin, he never looks at her. He plays in the dirt. What is he doing? He's recalculating, redrawing her whole life. And she's sin-free instantly. How many you know that if you understand this right here, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. How many you know that? That creeping thing, if you understand it correctly, it's demon spirits. These are the creeps. The creeps. Because what do you say when you walk in your house and all your hair stand up? Oh, it's kind of creepy in here. Okay. Point proven. How many of you find evil people who say, oh, that bloody creep. You're supposed to have dominion over these things. But it all happens in your mindset. Amen? If you can fix your head, you fix everything. Okay? Whether you believe me or not, you're here to listen, so you're my captive audience unless you run out the door now. So hang on. Now. Read it now. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. So everybody has this capability. Even men, they have this male side and this female side. So um, man, a man always wants to dominate things, but when he's alone, <laughs> nobody understands me. What the heck is going on? I'm dealing with his female side. Everybody has it, right? Everybody has it. But I want you to focus on 27 for you old timers, you know. So God created man in his own image. But in 26, he said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness. Okay. Where's the according to his likeness in 27? No more. How I many you know that the likeness is free will? It's free agency. It's up to you now to live out the likeness that comes from God. So we have to emulate God. We have to look at God and say, how would God deal with this? Well, I can tell you right now, Jesus would take dominion over all the earth and go fix it. You know that a lot of people, they medicate themselves, they go down the beach, jump in the water. Yeah? Or they run in the mud. You guys see all these older holy ladies there, they go in the mud and they play mud. 
There's another way, right? There's all kind of way. When you need lomi lomi, you go put hot rocks on top. Oh. And when you mad, you take the rocks and you flam at people. Anyway. Well, let's not do that, okay? Let's all calm down, amen? God wants you healed. Some people are praying to God for a healing. Some people praying to Jesus for a healing. Some people praying to the Holy Ghost for a healing. When all it is is up to you. You see, the concept in here is a little different than probably you've ever heard. There are giftings that are given to us in the New Testament that are given to us. You know, God is, after the sixth day, he's resting. See it? He's resting. Jesus, after he did all his work, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. What do you think they're doing? Resting. And we bothering him with prayers. When he gave all that ability to us to handle Yes, of course, the Holy Spirit is here. He is the one that is the giver of the gifts and the endorser and the enforcer of the gifts. So all you got to do is believe in the Holy Spirit because when Jesus left in Mark 16, he said, you know, you will cast out devils. You will speak with new tongues. You can't speak in new tongues without the Holy Ghost. So the concept is now it's left to us. How do we do it? Because of ori original intentions, how I many you know that when... The kingdom was restored back. We go back to Genesis 1. Everything that Adam and Eve did, okay, yeah, we call them sinners and all these things. And then we come through all this history, church history, and then Jesus on the cross says, it is finished. That means that all of that, erase. Amen. We go back to now having to live on the earth, but having the Garden of Eden inside of us. Everything original intention has to come from inside out. So if you need a healing, it may have to be that the outside has to meet your inside. And once you get the meeting, I mean, you know, there is no enemy that can stop it. Nothing. Zero. How many of you have had an encounter with God in your life? Well, you're here. You're having an encounter with God right now. How many of you had an encounter with God? I'm not talking about yesterday. Your two devils are yesterday and tomorrow. What about today? Today is your day. Right? This is the day that the Lord has made. You will rejoice and be... You know that God's still waiting for you to be glad yet? You only get four hours left in this today. Look at your name and say, I'm glad. Tell them, remind your face then. Okay. Amen. All right. So look at your notes here, right? A, God made us like Him. With that in mind, we should strive to think like Him. How would God handle it? Well, He left it to us. How would you handle it? That's how good. If you don't believe me, look at your whole life. Everything you believe and everything you say has come to pass. Some of you like looking at me like, what? Yeah, you're a creator because your father in heaven is a creator. So if he creates, your DNA spiritually is creative. So whatever you say has already been happening to you. If you don't like what's been happening to you, start thinking different. <laughs> don't go to the psychiatrist. Right? Because all they talk about is your mind. And then they're going to medicate your mind. So you stop thinking too much. And then what? You walk around drooling. <laughs> anyway, Bible says, you know me. Put the pills away. Calm down. God can heal anybody anytime they want to be healed. I have seen people die, and I pray for them, and they come back to life. Because obviously, they didn't want to die. What about you? Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you tired of what you have? Then you got to say... Enough is enough. I'm going to change the way I think. I'm going to see myself and speak myself healed. And it's going to meet up because it comes from the inside, not from here, but in here. And it's going to meet with a gift of healing or miracles, and I'm going to get my miracle. How many of you need a miracle? The greatest miracle you probably ever need is to get smarter. Some of you raise your hand because you resemble that remark. Don't we all need to get smarter? Yeah, that's so why you come to church. You, you know, I know a lot of preachers. They steal my stuff. 
But you know what they're stealing? They're just borrowing from the Holy Ghost because the Holy Spirit gave it to me anyway. So we're all sharing, actually. But here's the thing. You know, you got to own the material for it to happen for you. All right? Think about these guys. They build cars and they build airplanes. Can you go in your garage, build a car and an airplane? Yes. But it's going to take you a long time. You, know, you watch these old movies of these guys flapping their hands, trying to fly. And then somebody put an engine on it and it flew. You know, even when they put the first engine, it still crashed. So there's trial and error. If you're willing to pay the price, God can do anything through you. Amen. How many of you want to be rich in this life? Okay, I don't want my magic wand, but poof, you're all rich. As soon as you think yourself rich, you're rich. We read books like Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. Okay, well, how come you got to read on book to think and grow rich? To me, the title tells you the instructions already. Amen? Think and grow rich. Well, what more do you need between the pages from the cover to the end? It told you to think and grow rich. So if I think I'm rich, I will grow and be rich. Proverbs says this. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. So what are you thinking in here is who you are. Well, here's your enemy right here. This is the mountain Jesus talked about. He says, if you speak to this mountain and say, be ye gone or cast into the sea, it shall be. You know what I mean? The sea always represents forgetfulness. So if you take your mountain and throw it in the sea of forgetfulness, I mean, you, know, you forget all your past. You start forgiving everybody because you don't remember how, why they affected you that way. And then healing and miracles can happen. I got news for you. You will never forget what people did to you. You may put it on the side cabinet of your brain for a little while, but usually when you see them, you're like, <laughs> prayerfully, they're not in a crosswalk right on Highly Street by Cam Avenue. And you stopped right there, and they're walking in front because some of you will have brake failure. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, I got to. You guys all right? <laughs> You know why I say that? Because it's happened to me more than 10 times. People that uh, caused me to pull my hair out one strand at a time, because you guys see in my history right now. Crossing right by the old Amais. I'm just waiting and here they come. I can feel the pressure. I sound like Darth Vader. And you know what? The 10 times it happened, they never waved. So I had reasons. No, I didn't. Can you see my picture on the front page? Yes. Pastor runs over former enemy. What? <laughs> we all have those kind of people. The worst one is when you had Safeway or KTA and you walk, you mind your own business, and they go, Whoa! <laughs> Worse is when they make believe they shop in from the top shelf. And you coming down. Who shops from the top shelf? Only the health fiends. Or your enemies. Right? It's happened to me before. Amen. Top shelf or bottom shelf, they kneel down and start looking. Oh yeah, I like this healthy stuff down here. I like this real healthy stuff up here. You five feet tall, you cannot reach the top anyway. You like I help you, I'm six two. But people are people. You know, if they turn away from you, that means they are more afraid of you than you are of them. Because you eyeball them all the way. You waiting for a reason. How I many you know that your mindset is thinking, thinking right now? You you have just written a new book, hundred and one ways extra on top of another 101 ways to kill this person right in Safeway or KTA, right? You will be the special of the day in the case when we powered you. Okay, so can you see that the Old Testament, God was a killer. I mean, you know that all of us are created in His image. So there is a natural tendency for us to want to kill somebody. Following through is the other thing, like, <laughs> Jesus said, love your enemies. Let me tell you something. I'm not like Jesus yet. 
How many of you still have been formulated in Jesus' image? Put on the mind of Christ. I'm not there yet. Well, that's our excuse, right? Eventually, I'm getting there. I'm working on it. Uh, you know, all these people go 12 step. There's 13 steps. Anyway, we always want missing. <laughs> All right, God, so God made us in His own image and gave us dominion over the earth. Are you operating in your dominion? Now, don't fret. I may not get through all these notes tonight. Some of you are like, oh my God, it's only the first line. Slow down. You're going to study the rest later. Uh, so look at Genesis 2, verse 7. You already see it on your notes, right? So let's take a look here. So the image, everybody has image. Likeness is really up to you. All right. Jesus said this, right, when he was walking on the earth. He says, the traditions of man have nullified the power of God. Traditions. How many of you know what traditions are? Well, you know, if you want to talk about traditions, some people tell you, no whistle nighttime. Yeah. Right? Some people tell you, oh, no, sleep with your feet facing the door. No, I don't know, you name it. There's hundreds of them, right? The thing is, there has been some great violations in this room. But you're still here. See, so tradition. So how many of you know that if I talk about sin and forgiveness in the same sentence, how many of you know that I don't quite believe in what Jesus did? I am talking more about the devil than I am about, than about Jesus. If I talk about evil, then I'm not talking about good. So how many of you know that if you want to be a person of great authority over the earth, then you got to start talking about the goodness of God rather than about the demise of man. we got to cut that line off already. we got to just say, God is great. And the devil's not. Now, as most of you have heard my teaching on the three crosses, right? So if Jesus is in the middle and this monkey is tempting Jesus the same way that the devil did in Luke 4, how many know that this is probably the devil on the cross next to Jesus? That doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out, but people don't get it. 2,000 years later, here's the revelation. We finally figured out that the devil is tempting Jesus to try and get control over Jesus. If he can get Jesus to obey him even once, then he takes control over the whole universe. Because right? he tried to do it with God in the book of Job. He tried to tempt God into doing something at his disposal. And God was way smarter than that. He said, no, you do it. So on the cross, Jesus doesn't even acknowledge him. He looks the other way and this guy says, remember me or put me back together. So this is your Adam. This is your Satan. Once he puts Adam back in, I mean, you know that we go back to Genesis 1. That's it. You're in a Genesis 1 world and you are the dominator of your own garden. Everybody in here has a garden. You know why? We became farmers because of sin. We were gardeners under Adam. We became farmers. We had to toil the soil. You guys remember the curse of Adam? He had to go and work. After all of this now, Jesus comes out of the tomb and Mary Magdalene looks at him and says, Who are you? She supposes, according to the word, that he is the gardener because he went from farmer to gardener. She doesn't recognize the gardener because he's back in his glorified body. Everything has been restored and so have we. So let me tell you something. You are a gardener. You just tend to what's inside. Don't worry about the outside. Once you start growing the inside and it gets bigger than your outside, all your healing needs are gone. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. This is what you got to work inside here. And out here will take care of itself. How many of you need a healing tonight of some sort? Maybe in your body. Maybe in your mind. Maybe in your heart. Maybe in your whatever. In your family maybe. But how many of you know that once you tend to this and start ignoring the external stimuli, the internal will take care of the external. Believe me. I've seen it way too many times for it to be a coincidence. I have some of the most famous people who have called on this ministry for help. And I tell them the exact same thing I tell you. I'm not going to change my story because they're rich and famous. I'm just going to tell them the truth. You're screwed up. You know why you're screwed up? Because you think more up here than you do down here. As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. 
So who are you in here? What is your image? What is your likeness? Don't determine your image and likeness based on your history, which is tradition. Amen? Let me give you the sign of the cross. Some of you need this to feel holier. All right. Verse 7, that's where we're at. Read that. And the Lord God formed man of? I've got to give you proof. Eh? Here's your proof. And dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a? If you've ever seen me minister, many of you have. I've grabbed you by the hands. I've told you to breathe. Why? Because I'm asking God to breathe for you. Breathe into you. Get down to the bottom of your problems. And then exhale and it all comes. And some of you cough uncontrollably. And those that don't, I make you cough anyway. And I'm sorry. Because plenty of guys is hot head. How many of you get hot head? When you was young, your hot head made soft or cold. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know what mine was like. Anyway, my dad used to really give it to us. So much so that people accused me of anomo okole. So I always got to pull my pants up in the back. The front, I'm all right. Okay. I told you you guys can laugh. And when I walk past, no look behind. Yeah? Because I know how you guys think. I got to see this, Pastor. Now you no need to go investigate the matter later. Okay. You guys all happy now? I forgot my belt. Shuck. So I'm going to be doing some calisthenics up here. All right. Okay. So you guys got your proof. Verse 7. What are you made out of? Dust. What does Jesus recreate every time in the Bible? Dust. He just uses dust and he creates mud or he just doodles in the dust. He has everything at his disposal. You know, when these monkeys are in the boat and get big storm, what, what do you think they do? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> what do you do when you go into something? Oh, God, Jesus. <laughs> Where is Jesus? I can tell you right now, the same place he was in the boat, he's right now. He was snoozing in the boat. The one time they find him, he's sleeping inside the boat. What do you think Jesus is doing when you call him Jesus? <laughs> he's like, huh? What? Huh? Somebody calling me. Because he left it to us. Some people really have a hard time with me when I say that. But I just say, it's not that he's sleeping on the job. He's just resting and hoping you do it. Because there was evidence of him sending the 70 out two by two. You know what that means? Where two or more are gathered, he's in the midst anyway. He doesn't have to be there physically. He is there spiritually. So how many of you are always looking for somebody to help you? I got news for you. Me, myself, and I is three. You usually have two that are in disagreement within yourself. Either I and myself, or me and myself, or me and I, we don't get along. And that's why I need pills. Oh. <laughs> because you don't have even agreement within yourself. Once you agree with the three parts of yourself, the devil cannot do nothing to you. Just say, oh, okay, well, yeah, okay. Amen is a good thing to say. It's like cheerleading. I used to play better when the cheerleaders would cheer. When I used to play in a civic, when the cheerleaders cheering, except the really big ones. I had a hard time, yeah. You just listen, you know, look. Okay. So when I'm up here, I know, look, I, I listen. Hey, I, I told you guys a couple sermons ago, my dad's advice to me was, Take care of the big girls because you're going to need them one day. And every single time I've ever been at the DMV, the county, no matter, it's always the big girls that help me. And they go, oh, Timmy, oh, come here. I'll cut. Hey, move on aside. Come over here. Front of the line VIP treatment. Why? Because I treated them like a very important person too. Amen. I used to help. I give them my lunch because they're hungry. We all work together. Amen. That's why I was skinny in high school and I got big and now, anyway. It all works together. Amen. My dad told me that when I was young. He said, you always take care of the big girls because you need one girl. She going to be the one at the desk. And sure enough, one time I went to the tax office. I was behind in my taxes. I went to the window and it was a big girl. And she said, Timmy Wong. 
Oh, no worry about it. We take care. <laughs> wow. Praise the Lord. And she said, no, take too long. Eh? You're going to make me look bad because I got to sign this paper. You got it, sister. Then I brought her one bag, Lao Lao. And she was so happy. Gave me one one-year extension. So you still take care. Amen. Either that or you better take care of the nerds with the pens in their pocket because that's the ones you need later. They're usually the boss over the big girl. You better not discriminate. Okay, we're all good. All right, what are we talking about? Anyway, what? what? Some of you guys. Anyway, all right. Distractions. Uh, good stuff. Amen. How many are you having fun tonight? You never thought church would be this crazy. Yeah, good for you. So you're already getting healed. You see, I got to make you laugh no matter how stupid the material is. Because God didn't say only religious laughter is the best medicine. Well, the Bible says laughter. You know what laughter is? If I put up a picture up here and it was pretty gross and you laugh, you would get healed. But I won't do that to you today. <laughs> I, did that, I did that a couple months ago and everybody was like, oh my God, this is church. Some of you was looking for holy water for bless yourself. <laughs> the holiest water is right here. Because what did Jesus use as holy water? He never run to the priest. Oh, what? What priest had when Jesus was here? Okay, all right. I respect all men of the cloth. Amen. And even some big guys I know, they wear tablecloth as shirts. I used to. So I, I respect all. Okay, let's move on from that. All right, well... Mm. <laughs> in your notes so God created mankind from dust is that hard to understand it says it right in the word alright a father is meant to represent the fatherhood of God to his children so how many of you how many of you really are in need of a spiritual father in your life come on every hand should go up because you need one you know whether you know it or not you need that fatherly approval with a father's approval, you can do no wrong. Amen. Look at all your problems. If you know more fatherly person in your life, you get all kinds of problems. Yeah. Amen. Even me. Now my dad's gone. Guess what? I got to be more of a father. But I do have a spiritual father in Chicago. So he will never have a chance. Or when he get time for me, because I know he listening to me, because he's not calling me lately. Anyway, so. But I don't need his audible approval because I already know that whatever I'm doing meets with his approval anyway and that's what you need in your life amen when you have that spiritual endorsement there's nothing to stop you amen how many of you do some pretty dastardly stupid things in your life and if you don't do it physically you think it how many of you killed somebody today oh yeah yeah how many of you assaulted somebody today yeah 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 how many thought somebody oh said they're so stupid yeah 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 yeah. Are those sins? No, just facts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have some factual things that you say to yourself about other people. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm here to tell you, you're forgiven even before you start. You're forgiven while you're doing it, and you're forgiven after you do it. Because Jesus is the Lamb of God, Dad. All right, I need everybody to participate. Jesus is the Lamb of God who... <laughs> Remember, in the Bible it says, confess your faults one to another. It doesn't say confess your sin. The translation is wrong when it says sin. It's confess your faults. So what is your fault? If I say your fault, not when you bang somebody, say, oh, your fault insurance. Faults. You know what faults are? Things that you're guilty of. Right? And we all are guilty of something. Amen. How many of you did something today or thought something today that somebody told you one time, no, do that? If I said that was sin and sin is separation from God, how many of you know that none of you would go to heaven? How many of you are going to heaven when you die? Every hand should go up. Why would Jesus pay the price for everybody to go to heaven? And you say, I'm not sure. Oh, my God. You can get to heaven and say, I think I can, I think I can, I hope I can. 
you know, the tendency for religion is always to look at the bad of man rather than the good of man. How many of you are good by nature? Wow. Wow. I'm amazed at this crowd. Like three hands went up. Now, let me rephrase it then. How many of you are good by supernature or supernatural? Yeah, okay, yeah. Is that better? Does that frame it out a little better for you? You're supernaturally good. I need a drink. You guys are driving me to drink. All right. Pure life. You guys need this? During the sermon, it's ten dollars. Afterward, it's dollar. Okay. Hey, by God, by God doing what He did in sending Jesus, how many know that? For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten, say the word, Son. God so loved the world. Guess what? He sent you as a son. Huh? You know why you're going through all the things you're going through? Because you don't have that true identity of being a son yet. See, only these two guys talking tonight. How about the, from row two on? You guys? Oh, okay. Once you get your true identity, now you're not living under a case of mistaken identity. Because how many know that the world will try and label you with an identity that does not match up with God? And the number one identity that religion likes to name you as or label you as is sinner. Sinner. Even well-intentioned preachers like to get up and say, we're just all sinners saved by grace. Wait a minute. If I've been saved by grace, I ain't a sinner no more. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So I'm not a sinner anymore. How many of you would label yourself as a sinner? I would call you stupid more than sinner. Because stupid is still a choice. Sinning is not. Sin only can happen to the outsider. That means those that don't believe in God. Those are the real sinners because they have still separation from God. Therefore, there is a sin barrier. But once you call on the name of the Lord, the word says you shall be saved. So you bypass all of that and you're here. And then nobody can call you a sinner anymore because you don't fit the identity or the description any longer. So if you're no longer a sinner, you are an entitled child of the royal house of God who is entitled to every right and privilege of the kingdom of God. Amen. You are sovereign by supernature. The world will still try and label you and call you things, but they don't fit the description of who you are. Because you are so free that the Word says, He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Who set you free? Wait a minute now. He whom the Son sets free. So Jesus' first order of business is as a minister of freedom. He whom the Son sets free is free. So I got news for you. Many of you have been saddled with a lot of mindsets, thoughts, and traditions about not being free. That's why you're medicating yourself in your unfreedom, your slavery, your bondage. That's what happens. The enemy tries to get you into a mode of thinking where you don't see the victory. You only see defeat. That's why you walk around like this. Defeat. If I gotta explain the jokes, <laughs> you ever see depressed people? They walk around like this. They're looking at defeat. The Bible says, "Look to the hills where your help comes from." The hills, defeat. <laughs> Details, denial. <laughs> Everybody's still Egyptian by nature. They're always looking at denial as their friend. Denial river. Order in a court. I'm trying to go deep. I don't know, man. We need to submerge all of you in some kind of spiritual water tonight. <laughs> How many you know that you can be baptized in such a fashion that you don't have to go to ice pond? 
It's called baptism in fire. It's called baptism in the Holy Ghost. And in that comes all of your gifts. How many of you want to do miracles in your life? How many of you want to do miracles for other people? How many of you need a miracle? Well, you will only get what you minister to. Hello. If love conquers all, you need to start loving so you can conquer. Oh, yeah. What is your major problem in life? Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love. The whole world is looking for love. Some find it at McDonald's late at night in a dollar menu. Look at these two. They work out every day. You guys, you guys, uh, drive through. And if no more dip cones, you get really mad. I know I get really mad. You know why? Because I always look forward to chocolate all over my shirt. There's no way to eat a dip cone from McDonald's in a dignified manner. Because you put in hot chocolate on cold ice cream and it starts leaking everywhere. Pretty soon, you look like a dog that's thirsty on a summer day licking the pipe. And not finding satisfaction. <laughs> ah, it's leaking, you bite the chocolate, I'll fall on your shirt. And happiness ensues everywhere. Because you start sucking your shirt. <laughs> Am I right? Go use that medicine more than the other ones in your cabinet. Okay. You guys are right. Some of you really needed to laugh tonight. Because I know who you dealt with today. You were dealing with some pretty depressed me, myself, and I's today. <laughs> you, all of us deal with people. Huh? Yourself. Oh, man. You know what the Bible says? Jesus said, Love God, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So the first thing you got to love is yourself. So when you take a shower, put one big butcher paper over your mirror. Hide that picture. Because some of you look at yourself and you get depressed right off the bat in the morning. Oh my God. Where have the years gone? Gravity is not my friend. Makeup is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, all right. Oh my goodness. I don't even know where we stay already. All right, anyway. Colossians 2 8. Let's look. Just go through the scriptures already because some of you need that. Yeah. Some of you like, when you go and pray. Calm down. Calm down. People, other people came to listen to me make them laugh. <laughs> you guys all right? Say you're all right even if you're not. All right, look at your name and say, you're all right sometimes. <laughs> all right, is this Colossians 2 right there? All right. Oh, see, trickery. Colossians 1. Two. Oh, Marcy. Colossians 2, 8, Amplified. Read this here. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Do you want to keep reading? And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So there's... Two major trees. There's a bunch of trees, but there's two in there, right? And what are those two that are mentioned here? Tree of, tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of. And God said, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why? I don't know. He just said. Why, are you looking for mysteries to be solved for you? God said, don't eat of that tree. And the, the enemy comes and says, how oh, do you know that the enemy likes to... He likes to give you the truth, but twist it just a little so you screw it up. Right? He likes you to screw things up on your own, and then you go, not me, not me. The same like kids who steal cookies and then blame their siblings. No, you are. no they gave me. Yeah, okay. And that's exactly what Adam does with Eve. I never eat of the tree, but I ate what she gave me. I never pick them. Right? And mind you, it's not apples, boys and girls. It's figs. Okay, so maybe you've never heard this before, but Adam and Eve did not eat an apple, they ate a fig. Because apple leaves is too small. You better go study your botany. 
if you eat something and you see you naked, you're not going to run to another tree and go get one leaf. Like, oh my, no, it was a fig. That's why when Jesus comes on the scene, he curses a fig tree. Some of you are not even getting this. I'm trying not to make this educational. I'm trying to make it entertainment for you, recreational. Okay, Jesus curses the fig tree. So how many know that when Jesus dies on the cross, a lot of scholars believe that it may have been a cross made of a fig tree. And it could very well be the very fig tree he cursed. What? Mind blown. Anyway, well, if you want to go that far, you want to blow your mind, I, please don't blow your mind. You gave away too many pieces over the course of your history already. Because you always say that, I'm about to give you a piece of my mind. How many pieces you get left? No, you know, I'm enough. All right, so this is the kind of the theological theory, possibly and potentially, that Adam and Eve ate a fig. Because when Jesus comes on the scene and he looks at a fig tree, whenever there's leaves, there's supposed to be figs on it because they come in together. How many know that this tree that is showing leaves but no fruit, uh-huh, no fruit? How many know there's a lot of Christians that are showing leaves but no more fruit? Well, let's go one step further. Plenty of Christians that you know, they're granola. Flakes, fruits, and nuts. <laughs> Laugh at that. You guys all know a lot of flakes, a lot of fruits, and a lot of nuts. And they like to call you on your side. Well, the reason you're going through this is because... I don't like hearing your because. Right? People always do that. How come everybody likes to live your life for you? They don't know the price of what you had to pay to get where you are today. How many of you have been through a lot in your life? Say, yeah, I've been through a lot. Then nobody has a right to tell you nothing. And I spell that N-U-T, like nut, nothing. (laughs) Flake, fruit, nut. You know why? Flakes, fruits, and nuts always like to tell you how to live because they think they're more healthy than you. Uh, Isn't that what they say about granola? It's supposed to be healthy for you. And then you eat it, and then you're like running around like a nut for a little while. Because the sugar rush. Anyway, and then after the crash. I don't know what happened. Now i got to go to the bathroom. Because flakes, fruits, and nuts always make you want to go to the bathroom. I know. Ask me how I know. I'll tell you. The price I paid, a lot of people don't want to pay that. So I see a lot more things than a lot of people see. Not because I'm the chosen. I'm the golden child. I uh, know. I'm from Lanakila. If I'm the golden child, then that gold is made of tin foil that was in a Wrigley's gum and was chewed up and put the gum in and thrown on the side. That's what they think of us kids from Lanakila back in the day. But... Nonetheless, I have seen many things. I have experienced many things. And you know, the only explanation I can give is all the miracles that I've seen in my life. I've seen God do it, and I got to buy the ticket without buying the ticket just for watch. Wow. Because sometimes it blows me away. You know, we had that boy about three or four weeks ago got here, paralyzed from the waist down. He's playing basketball tonight. 14 years old playing basketball, you were paralyzed for four years. Kapilani couldn't explain what was going on with you, but Jesus can. Yeah, you know, we found what was wrong with his leg is because one of the seven doors that opened themselves up to will being brought down. I can tell you right now, if you do drugs, if you smoke drugs, if you sleep around, if you get hit in the head, if you got in a car accident, if you got any kind of mental disorder, anyway. Somebody hit you in the head and you lost consciousness, they come in. Anesthesia is another one because you let your will down. Once you let your will down, the demonic side has a right to invade your dirt. And they come like dust mites. And they start making all kinds of trouble in your body. So what do you got to do? Well, you ask the Holy Ghost with the water of the Holy Ghost to wash the dust mites out. Amen. How many of you got some real trouble in your body going on? If you don't have it in your body, you got it on here. Yeah, yeah, mine. Huh? You got termites in the woodwork. <laughs> Pinocchio. Anyway, we can fix anything. I've seen everything. You know, just a few weeks ago, I saw, you know, this guy called me. And he said, "Oh, I'm dying of, I'm dying of AIDS." He said, "I just figure, eh, what the hell? 
I get those kind of calls sometimes. Pastor Tim, can you pray for me? I said, what's going on? Well, they say I have a couple days left to live. Ah, what the hell? Okay, I think that is hell in your body. And this person was gay. Okay? We'll just say what it is. He is gay. And he acquired AIDS. Couldn't afford the medication. He's dying of AIDS. He has Kaposi sarcoma. You guys know what that is? Purple blotches all over your body. So he can't leave the house because of shame. So he can't go. And he had some Christians come in. This was their first response. He said when they walked in the house and saw him like, Oh my God. You know what I do when I see religious people or I hear them? Oh my God. You know why? Because they usually say things that don't make sense to the Bible. And you know, one person told him, well, the reason you're going to is because you have a gay lifestyle. God is punishing you. God is not punishing nobody. He's sleeping. God is taking a rest. Amen? So I told him, well, you say what the hell. I say, hey, what the heaven? So I began to pray with him. Just pray. I prayed the same prayer. I always pray with everybody. And you know what he said? He says, I feel tingling all over my body. I said, that's good. You're not lying on your leg like this guy tonight. Anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> he says, well, I'm just on the phone with you and I've, I feel tingling all over my body. It's like a fire going through me. It feels like a fire surrounding me. I said, that's good. Take a deep breath. I said, if you feel some kind of tickle in your throat, just cough that on. And he started coughing for like 13 minutes straight. While I'm on the phone, I'm like, you all right? <laughs> okay, I'll wait. <laughs> then I heard a pause. <sighs> you okay? <laughs> okay, well, I'll wait. So we waited about 13 minutes. Then I said, take a deep breath. How do you feel? He said, funny thing, it started in my hands. The purple spots started disappearing one by one. They disappeared off my head. They disappeared off my torso. There is no purple spots in me. And he started walking. He said, I haven't walked in weeks. He started walking. He said, you know what I'm hungry for? I said, what? He said, a ham sandwich. I said, now you speak in my language. Praise God. Because he hadn't eaten in over a month. They were tube feeding him. I said, well, don't pull the tube out. But, you know, a ham sandwich, I don't know where you're going for that at this hour. Yeah. Seven, you see, I knew I could count on you guys. Where are you going to get a ham sandwich later tonight? Okay, all well, oh, you know. Well, he, had, he had a 24-hour nurse, and she was witnessing this, and she said, wow. She couldn't understand, and she couldn't explain. Well, I got a call from him yesterday, and you know what he's doing right now? He reapplied for his old job. He wants to go back to work. He went from being 103 pounds to now he's about 150. About 150, and he's on his way back, and they just tested him for AIDS and found nothing. So, you know, these kind of things still happen today, boys and girls. Can they happen here in Hilo? You know what the greatest miracle is? Some of you showed up in church. Nobody ever thought you would come to church. Especially on a Wednesday. Nighttime. What? And look where you are tonight. Well, I can tell you thousands of stories. Well, you know, the most famous one is the little girl, girl born without fingers and her fingers grew. That's a very famous testimony nationwide. But you know what? I just got to witness that because when it happened, I wasn't like, yeah, praise God, hallelujah. I was like, holy cow. I said, that's one that I cannot explain. I can't. Jesus, what are you doing over here? Yeah, how do you explain that? A girl who had no fingers from birth, all of a sudden, I asked the Lord, how did that happen? He said, the fingers were always there. You just had to have faith to see it. Once the faith came in, they could see. And the most miraculous part is the fingernail polish to match the other side. The cracked up. You know how little girls, they like, yeah. The other side was like, same thing. Match. Perfect match. Wow. Can you imagine? Well, you know, little things make a difference, right? A few weeks ago, I had somebody that couldn't smell or taste. That is a personal hell. That's a good way to lose weight, I guess. But this person couldn't smell or taste. And I just said, Lord, heal it in Jesus' name. And she said, I smell something burning. I was like. And she said, my kid left the stove on. Well, can you imagine if she didn't smell that? She'd be dealing with a whole other kind of fire and ain't the Holy Ghost fire. That's for sure. But she said, oh, my God. See, these things have a timing sometimes. 
Do you guys believe in timing? Yeah. What's your timing? Right now? What you like? I'm here to tell you. What do you want? You just got to visualize it, speak to it, and it'll happen for you. What do you want? Most people go like this. This is their first response. Pastor Tim said, what do I want? Oh, mm, let me think. Oh, too late. Power already passed. The boat went. You got to know all the time what you believe in God for. You got to know at every moment what you want from God and start thinking it, visualizing it, and speaking to it, and it'll happen for you. What do you want? Some of you like, oh, you still did it. Look at that. You know what I mean? Let me ask you one more time. What do you want from God? Some of you like, I'm not going to say, oh, just gotta, you just got to tell God what you want because it is His great pleasure. It says in the word, delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. He's not going to give you the desires of your head. He can give you the desires of your heart where vision comes from. Then it migrates up into your head. And if the lawyers in your head don't oppose or object in the court of law and the law is sin, if you get agreement here, then it'll start coming out your mouth and you get everything you delight yourself in. I hope I'm making sense for you. Some of you. You know, we do sell these CDs if you want to contribute to the ministry. If not, then you got to go listen online. Some of you know, Spreaker or I'm on iHeartRadio on a podcast. Praise God for these things. Amen. One preacher told me, how oh, you did that? <laughs> now that you put it like that, I'm not going to tell. Is, is it that big of a deal? If it's that big of a deal, I ain't telling you. I said, I'm just blessed. Praise God. How many of you are blessed? Yeah. You are blessed. If you raised your hand, the faster you raised your hand, the more blessed you was. Some of you are like, oh, I better raise my hand now. Yeah. Oh. How many of you are blessed? Whew. Oh, some of you are still behind. Some of you stay on your smartphone doing dumb things. Anyway, and you tell it, you would tell me, no, I'm on the Bible app. Oh. <laughs> Lies. Anyway. Well, Good stuff, amen. How many of you like prayer? It's 8.30. How many of you going to read this if I let you go now? We're going to keep going then, okay. I gave you your chance. <laughs> oh, you guys like this stuff. All right. How about Proverbs 23? Let's look at that one. I like this one. Some of you are like, what? What about the other ones? Shut your mouth. I'm in charge. And there it is. There's your scripture, right? For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. What? You thought I was lying. <laughs> no. So which thinker are we using? Head thinker or heart thinker? Right. Well, you know that the Holy Ghost likes to spur you on to greatness. He always gives you great vision, big vision. So some, some of us, we're guilty of dreaming small. Yeah? Some of you are like, God, I just need a job. Poof, you had McDonald's scrubbing the grill. I hate my job. I hate because you never see what kind of job you like. I want to be the CEO in my life. How many of you want to be a CEO? Poof, you only come church Christmas and Easter only. I gotta explain that joke to you. C Christmas E Easter O only. Get on the bus. Anyway. No. If you want to be something great, God is more than able to help you be great. But you're going to have to get rid of some stuff. And your stuff might include some people. You know that there's people in your life that don't want you to rise up? They don't. And you call them your best friend. Or your BFF. I got some words for BF. Anyway, but I won't say it in church because some of you will be like, what manner of pastor are you? <laughs> Real from Lanagila, yeah. Some of you have people that are just acquaintances. You know the number one people that pull you down usually is family. Because they always think that they know better than you how to live your life because they never did, so they like to see you do them for them. That's otherwise known as living vicariously through somebody else. You know, I have coached sports for, wow, this is going to be my 33rd year of coaching. It's hard to do when you're only 35, but it's a miracle. Praise God. 
<laughs> Corey used to play for me. <laughs> he used to play baseball for me. I told him the other day, hey, you used to play baseball for me when you show up for practice. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, like any kid, you know, I think, oh, hallelujah. But one thing I noticed is that a lot of parents like to live for their kids. So, how come you're not letting my kid play? You want the real reason or the scientific reason? Sometimes you just don't have the heart to say your kid sucks. Anyway, or we say he's less athletically inclined than the other young ones. And they're like, Whoa. yeah. Anyway, Baffalo would be S. How many of you are still here? You okay? God is going to heal you tonight of everything in your life. How many of you need a job of some sort? What job do you want? You like be the guy at Burger King with the rubber gloves in the back, joining the fryer? Or you like be the one that wear a different color shirt? Uh, anyway, you, you can be anything you want, right? You just got to work toward it. I told a story one time. I had a friend who was in deep trouble when we was kids. Bad trouble. This guy was, if, if, if he was rotten, that was capital R, rotten. He was rotten. You know that today, I told the story before, he was given a choice by a judge. Either you get back to school or I'm going to put you in boys' home. Well, he went back to school. He was forced to. Got in trouble again as an adult. The, basically, the judge told him, again, this is your last chance. You go in prison. If you're not going to prison, you better get to school. And he went and he met a teacher. One person changed his whole life. A male professor at HCC changed his whole life. This guy believed in him, nurtured him, got him through, and he found out that he liked science. So he started taking science classes. He liked it, went to the UH. He did so well, he got a scholarship to John Byrne School of Medicine. He became a neurologist, a neurosurgeon after that, and now he's one of the top neurosurgeons around. He went from being in trouble all the time. You know, the, every day he would tell me this, bro, you like Byrne. What? Burn what? <laughs> that was his only thought waking up. Bah, you like burn. <laughs> and now this guy is in charge of people's brains. He smoked away most of his brains in his youth, and now he's in charge of brains. I'm like, how do you do it? He goes, bah, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. I said, what in your head changed? He said, you know what? If not for that one guy that believed in me, one man, one male. How many you know that that's a real important aspect in your life? To have that one person in your life, whether it's male or female, it doesn't matter. But that one person who says, no matter what you do, you're all right with me. You know that once you get permission to do stuff, and this is what that professor told him, smoke all the weed you want as long as you pass your classes. And you know what? Because he got that approval and that permission to go smoke all the weed he wanted, all of a sudden he didn't want to smoke the weed. Right? It's like a kid, right? If you withhold snacks from them, every time they see a snack, what they're going to do? They want to grab it and eat it. But if you put all the snacks in a mountain on your table and say, eat all you like, all of a sudden there's no rebellion attached to it. Like, ah, I don't like. The snacks get stale. Right? So I'm here to give you permission spiritually. Go do whatever you like. Um, should I repeat that for you? Some of you have problems with that? I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor. I am supposedly some kind of spiritual authority in the world. Here's my permission for you. You have free agency. Go live the life you want. I'm here to love you no matter what. There's nothing you can do that can disappoint me except not show up for church when I'm talking. Anyway, I, that was my rant for those of you that are part-timers. Anyway, no, I'm just, oh yeah. Yeah, like, you hear the chihuahuas. Oh yeah, I'm going to bite your ankle. Oh, you can have a life that you always wanted because the scripture is like this. Don't let somebody come in and tell you, you are what you are because of what you did. Didn't Jesus pay for that and forgive you of that? Yeah. How many times does it take to get forgiven? 
One time. As soon as your mind makes up its mind that it's forgiven, you're forgiven forever. How many of you did some really stupid stuff? I'm not going to say today. I'm going to just say before today, from today. Be- <laughs> BC days, before Christ. Yeah. Well, we all do stupid stuff, you know. Here's the thing. At some point in time, you got to be smart. Right? Make your own decision. I'm not here to live your life for you. I see you guys all the time. They come to the church for a while. I see them. And look, I get on a bunch of smokers in my church. They're all out there smoking right now <laughs> by the gas station. Hey, if you see fireworks, just know. This guy's taking care. But people all the time, they run up to me and they're smoking. And they go, oh, oh, hey, Pastor Tim. And then they do the chicken wing. <laughs> hey, Pastor. And the smoke coming up from behind the head. Um, yeah, I don't know what you, I don't know. It looks like your brain's thinking a lot because the smoke coming from behind your head. Here's the thing. I don't care. I don't care. You smoke weed. You don't have to tell me you get one medical license. I don't care. Because everybody like show me, they're digging it one pastor. I get one card, you know, for smoking weed. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Man. I don't care. Because you're already forgiven. Man. Hallelujah. If you told me you ate my food, they're not going to have a problem. Like, um, well, not since I lost that 100 pounds, but here's the thing. Now I'm willing to share everything I have. Yeah. But I want you to understand, you came here for a reason. I'm here to give you freedom. He whom the sun sets free is free. Live a life of is free. No matter what your decisions are, live with it. Own up to it. When somebody says, and I've said this to the old time, somebody says, well, you're a sinner, say, and, and? That should be your answer. And? And? Well, why are you like call me that? And? Oh, I saw you doing, yeah, and? Now what? Praise God. Beware of the people that say, praise God, thank you, Jesus, and hallelujah in a sentence all at the same time. You guys all here? Let me knock on your door. Because I meet a lot of people and they think that they got to say those three words in every sentence to impress me. You know what impresses me? People who use the F word to describe everything they do. Because then I know they for real. I promise. Anything else is BS to me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, Pastor, I was down at McDonald's. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, okay, what well, was so hallelujah and praise the Lord about McDonald's? You need healing for that? Cholesterol? What? When somebody says, oh, I, I got one effing Big Mac for free today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. How you did that? You guys all right with me? Some of you like, what manner of religion is this? He whom the Son says free. Isn't it funny that I believe in very coarse and rude things, but yet I've witnessed more miracles than everybody? And I've participated in a lot? It's because I'm free. Amen. Yeah, I, don't, I don't try and put myself in bondage. So if you have a problem with my freedom, then you're just religious. And religious people should all stand by the pit of hell and roast their marshmallows. Because <laughs> I don't care what you think of me, man. All I know is I'm on to the next miracle. And the next. And the next. And who knows, you could be the next tonight. All right, so stand up.